I'm Tia and I'm going to share with you 10 of the best books that I've read this year. The first book on my list is On Earth Were Briefly Gorgeous by Ojin Wong. This book is a letter from a son, a young Vietnamese immigrant, to his mother who doesn't know how to read. Honestly, reading this book feels less like a novel and more like a memoir because it proceeds to a series of vignettes. There are flashbacks to his turbulent childhood when he was bullied and physically abused by his mother. There are also stories and memories of his mother and grandmother's past fleeing from Vietnam, their trauma of war, and how it connects to the life story of the boy, which is a story of a boy trying to find his true self in a foreign country, his first love, drug addiction, and there are poignant moments reflecting his love of his mother and grandmother. Throughout these passages, it's evident that the author is a poet because of how lyrical and beautifully written his sentences are. There are moments where I find myself stunned by his words, and some moments in the book are written in such great detail that the complexity of family and immigrant life felt very real, which makes this novel very raw and very powerful because it's written with such thoughtfulness and grace. The second book is How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan. This book is about psychedelics. The author starts by recounting the discovery and synthesis of LSD, and that's what the first half of the book focuses on, the history of psychedelics. It then moves to the development in the 50s and 60s, and then its stigmatization and allowing in the 60s, and how research has begun once again in recent years. While writing the book, even Michael Pollan himself took a number of psychedelic drugs and then related what occurred. But what's most interesting to me is his exploration of the spirituality of psychedelic experiences. He drew an analogy to a child's mind where the capacity for awe and wonder is stronger. And it's even suggested in the book that the mind of a meditator and the mind of people undergoing a psychedelic trip display commonalities, which is a very interesting thing to learn. I feel like the book, the narrative is accessible to many kinds of people from researcher to the general public. And this book definitely piqued my curiosity. Next up is Once Upon a River by Diane Satterfield. The premise of this book hooked me from the very first chart. So it begins with a man entering a bar. He's carrying a young girl who he has no idea who she is. She appears to be deceased. So then the body is brought to the hospital. But then miraculously, the girl reawakens. The book then tells the story of three families who each have lost a young girl. So when the story of this reawakening reaches them, they each claim that the girl is their own. Now, this sounds like a mystery, but the way that this book is written, it feels like a fairy tale. It has that heavy folklore-ish atmosphere to it, from the background to the characters to the storytelling. So it perfectly combines the suspense of a mystery, but also the wonder and charm of a fairy tale, which to me is very inventive. There's undoubtedly so much imagination that went into this book, and it definitely makes this book a worthwhile read. In July of 2017, David Wallace Wells published an article on climate change in New York Magazine. It began with the words, It is, I promise, worse than you think. Then he turned that article into a book, which began, It is, worse, much worse than you think. That book is titled The Inhabitable Earth after the article. I've always tried to be well informed on the issue of climate change, but still this book is very depressing to me. It just shows how much of the damage on earth is already unfolding. The second sequence of the book titled The Elements of Chaos to me is the most frightening. He divides the planet into 12 cascading dangers like wildfire, drowning, and breathable air. And he begins to be really specific in mentioning the effects relating to these dangers that we wouldn't have anticipated before. This book paints a bleak picture of our future if the issue of climate change isn't addressed soon and seriously enough. Because even as people who read the news or are sensitive to these issues, we tend to underestimate the scale of the tribulations we face. Next up is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. It's a historical fiction that tells the story of a Korean family amidst the Japanese civilization of Korea. The family then moved to Japan in hope of a better life as it seemed to be the idea that was 
promised to many Koreans at that time. However, they turned out to be facing an even more difficult life condition where they faced plain racism on top of living in poverty. And the third generation of the family survived by running a pachinko business. Pachinko is an arcade game that was frequently used as a gambling device and it was considered dirty business. But even long before that, the family struggled in so many ways to make ends meet. It's a heartbreaking story of a family struggle and what stood to me the most from this book is how the writer is able to trace the historical context to the development of the characters. So I found myself able to not only learn about the Japanese-Korean dynamics, but also to empathize with the characters, which is a sign of a good novel to me. The next book is The Gatekeepers by Chris Whipple. This book describes the position of the modern White House Chief of Staff from the presidency of Richard Nixon to the early months of the Trump presidency. Throughout the book, Chris Whipple contrasts successful and unsuccessful chief of staffs based on the successes and failures of the president's day advice. This book is so meticulously researched, he interviewed 17 former chief of staffs and two former presidents, so it's full of newsworthy information. Despite following bits of American politics, so many of what I've read in this book are news to me. And I feel like if you're someone who follows these figures, reading this book would fill in a lot of holes of past political actions. But even if you're not, this book is clearly written and it's easy enough to follow along. I think that Chris Whipple is an extraordinary journalist because reading this book truly feels like watching a very captivating documentary. If there's a book that got me feeling so sad and angry and upheld, it's this book. It's called The Sun Does Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton. It tells the real life story of the writer who is convicted of a murder he didn't commit and he spent 30 years on death row. There was a sentence in the book that really stayed with me. It says, he's a poor man in a criminal justice system that treats you better if you're rich and guilty than if you're poor and innocent. And it tells a lot about the criminal justice system, not only in America, but in too many places in this world. Yet this man remained hopeful and kind. There was even a moment where he was trying to remove the hate from his heart to the people that conspired to put him behind bars. And that moment really struck me, just this unwavering humanity that this man has. This book is a hard read, but definitely inspiring one. Next on the list is Factfulness by Hans Rosling, a very popular book indeed. So the central thesis of this book is that based on most measures, the world is better than we think. We are trapped in so many misconceptions because we use outdated statistics and we lack of understanding of how data works. One of the most common misconceptions is the bisection of the world, in which we are so used to putting everyone in this world into two boxes, the developed and the developing, forgetting that the world is complex and multifaceted. We're also often presented with an overdramatic worldview because, ironically, good news don't break through headlines. So this book shows the importance in finding truth and information fed to us, and it tells us to break away from the instinct that caused us a dramatic or distorted view of the world. This book definitely makes me more aware to look for facts and not narratives. The next book really blown my interest in sci-fi. It's called Exhalation by Ted Chung. It's a collection of short stories. And while the cliches of sci-fi like AI, alternate reality, and time travel play a part in many of the stories, he explores how it relates to aspects of humanity like faith, free will, and human desires. I've heard of people describing his work as philosophical science fiction because of how it dives into philosophical and moral questions. The idea behind each of the story is very authentic. It ranges from virtual AI paths to robot nannies to futuristic device used for criminal ends. And even though I like some of the stories better than the others, I really like how Tat Chong is very versatile, meaning that each story really stands out on its own. And I think that overall, this book is very captivating and very thought provoking. The last book is Educated by Tara Westover, a very popular memoir 
It tells the story of Tara Westover, a child of a religious fanatic. Her father views the government as evil, and by government it includes schools, hospitals, vaccines, seat belts, car insurance, basically everything we think of as civilization. Instead, he hoarded food and guns and bullets in preparation for the days of abomination. So she grew up ingrained with these principles, and it was not until her brother Tyler's breakaway that she realized the possibility to dream of a life outside of what is destined for her. She rose above that life, and when she went to college, it was the first time that she had been in a classroom, and it was the first time that she learned about slavery and World War II and civil rights movement. And, you know, it, it was hard for me to grasp the concept that these things that I take for granted, knowing all these things, it doesn't come as easily to her and maybe to other people. So she went on with her life and she earned her PhD from Cambridge and a visiting fellowship from Harvard. And she became truly educated, not only in the formal meaning of the word, but on herself by reclaiming her own narrative. And that makes this a truly unforgettable story. So that'll be all. Top 10 of the best books that I read this year. I hope you find it useful and Happy New Year! Thank you.